Arya? Ma'am? Okay. Okay. Can we start, ma'am? Yes, yes. Okay. Good evening, man and all. A warm welcome to one and all present here to the joint session organized by ASME and SECR College of Dental Sciences and Research, innovative teaching methods using online tools. This session is unique as we usually train students, but now this is a wonderful, this is for the wonderful bunch of dear teacher. A teacher is like a burning candle who spreads the lights of light of knowledge. This session aims to add more shine to those burning candles. A good teacher should also be a person who is keen in making classes so interesting. This session aims to explain how to impregnate pebbles of knowledge deeply in mind of students by creating interesting and interactive classroom sessions. At this juncture, it's my privilege to propose the welcome speech. First of all, I would like to welcome the orator for the day, Dr. P. Shanmugha Sundarasan, sir, Director, School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, to this webinar. Hearty welcome, sir, on behalf of ASMIC and Assisia College of Dental Sciences. Thank you, ma'am. The other speaker for the day is the ever charming Dr. T. N. Uma Maheshwari. Hearty welcome, ma'am, to this webinar. We are eagerly waiting to hear from you. Thank you. Welcome, so ma'am. Thank you. We recognize among us the presence of heads of Assisia Dental College, Principal Dr. Radha Krishnan Nair, sir, Dr. K. Nandakumar, Dean of Assisia Dental College, and Dr. R. Reddy, Vice Principal, Assisia Dental College. On behalf of Assisia Dental College and ASMIC, I wholeheartedly welcome Team Assisia to this program. This day would never have been possible without the enthusiastic efforts put forward by Team ASMIC 2022. I wholeheartedly welcome our dear President Dr. Bina Varma and our vibrant secretary Dr. Deepa Ma'am to today's webinar. I would like to welcome all the executive members of, of ASMIC to today's webinar. Last but not the least, I would like to extend a wholehearted welcome to what we are present here. Welcome all and let's go on. Hello? 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 Audible? Hello? Yes, sir, you're audible. Uh, I'm just trying to respond. Am I audible to you? Yeah, yeah, you're audible. I think Dr. Nripen's audio is on. Dr. Nripen? Moving on to the introduction of the orator for the day, Dr. P. Shanmuga Sundaram. He is the director, School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Bell Institute of Science and Technology, uh, Chennai. He, is, he did his B. Farm from C. L. Bate College of Pharmacy, Chennai, and M. Farm in Pharmaceutical Chemistry from C. L. Bate College of Pharmacy, Chennai. He is a PhD holder in the Department of Pharmacology and Environmental Toxicology from Dr. ALM Institute of Basic Medical Sciences, University of Madras. He has conferred the DLIT, the honorary degree by the University of South America based on recommendation of Dr. S. Radha Krishnan, Teachers Welfare Association, New Delhi. He is currently the Director of School of Pharmaceutical Sciences and has many laurels to his credit. 
He is the life member of Pharmacy Council of India, Tamil Nadu, President, Association of Pharmacy Professionals, Tamil Nadu branch, and has N number to be listed. He has psychology publications related to pharmaceutical chemistry and national UGC approved and international journals. We are eagerly waiting for your words of wisdom, sir. Over to Dr. P. Shanbukasundaram, sir. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Um, it's uh, indeed a great pleasure to be associated with uh, Azizia College. Actually, it's going to be a dual presentation by myself and Dr. Uma Mageshwari. And uh, Uma Mageshwari is uh, going to start the session and it will be continued by me. So, Arya, ma'am, you can also introduce Uma Mageshwari so that uh, we can uh, go parallelly. Dr. Arya? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can, ah, you, can also, you can also finish introducing Umam Mageshi so that uh, parallelly we'll be uh, handling the okay. session. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Dr. T. and Umam Mageshi, ma'am, has 17 years of PG testing experience and the recipient of 26 national and international awards. Business person in 17 academic committees such as academic council member, doctoral committee, scientific research, review board, institutional ethics committee, journal editor, and reviewer of various national and international uh, journals. He did, uh, she did his PhD and PG thesis and short term uh, projects for both UGs and PGs and received first place in Dr. Leela. Krishna Murthy Memorial Award in 34th National Annual Conference. And she holds many national and international publications. And this session will be jointly uh, handled by Shanmukam sir and Uma Maheshwari ma'am. Over to you both. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, I, at the onset, I would like to thank the Azizia College of Dental Science in association with Stomatologist Association and Maxillofacial Imagiologist of Kerala. And as all of us know that I am not a stranger, so I have been, my association with Azizia Dental College goes back to about three to four years, where I, I really uh, would like to thank the trust for the Azizia Dental College, the organizing team, especially Dr. Deepa. Who's the head of the Department of Physiology of Dental College to have so much of trust, and I hope I live up to your expectations. Can can we continue the session? There are some audio disturbances. Am I audible? Somebody's audio is not muted. Can I continue? Yes, ma'am, sure. Okay. So today's talk is on innovative teaching methods. As like me, I think many of the teachers, the academicians will still agree that the chalk and talk method is the best method. Whatever may be the innovative teaching modalities which are evaluated today, definitely I also agree that the chalk and talk method the blackboard, the whiteboard, which we use interacting and giving our extempo speech still stands the best. No doubt about it. Any teaching methodology has its own advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage of chalk and talk method is the confidence which really which we inculcated over a period of now I am attached to teaching experience for about 17 years. So definitely the initial period of my teaching was chalk and talk method which definitely gave me the courage, the confidence which I had inculcated. When I had even taken an unprepared class, it's because of the talk and talk method. But what are the disadvantages or, or the advantages in the innovative teaching methodology is that just like how our whiteboards have been transferred into smart boards, our cell phones, our mobile phones have been transferred into smart gadgets. It has its own advantages and dis disadvantages. And time has come for our paradigm shift from chalk and talk method to all the innovative teaching methodologies. We need to blend our teaching with technology. 
we need not be technocrats. This main talk is going to tell you that you need not be technocrats to handle the innovative teaching methodology. Even by simple handling of the online tools with our basic technology and skills, we'll be able to bring in innovative teaching methodology. We'll be able to blend our innovative teaching methodology with chalk and talk method. We can stick on to chalk and talk method, but again, we can blend our innovative online tools which we can explore, try to use each and every innovative teaching modalities, depending upon the class which we are going to take, we can try to choose that particular innovative teaching methodology, or we can even try one or two online tools in our teaching modality, so that we can make our class even more connected with the students. So here we are going to tell you both in our lecture as well as in our hands-on session, we are going to tell you that you need not be technocrats, but with your basic technology skills, how you can bring in those technology skills, how can you blend your technology with your teaching modality. So that is the main aim of our presentation. Hmm? Here I am Dr. Who is working for a period of 17 years in the Savita University. In leaps and bounds, I had evoluted my teaching modality starting from my chalk and talk method, now using the various online tools in various uh, classes, both in undergraduate level, postgraduate level, even in a postdoctoral or doctoral level, thesis level, how we are educating the students based on different level of education, how we, we can bring our innovative teaching modalities. Because as a teacher, our main aim is and main aim and objective is that we want to make the teaching understandable, interesting, approachable, reproducible. Whatever we have taught, finally the student should be able to apply it in his career. So with that aim, our teaching modalities definitely need a paradigm shift from chalk and talk method, evoluting, exploring the various technologies and try to bring in are teaching the most innovative teaching modality. So what are the different innovative teaching modalities involved are blended learning, mind mapping, peer-to-peer -peer learning, inquiry-based learning, flipped classroom, participative learning, jigsaw learning. So we are going to see how we can bring in our teaching modalities in connection with the students and aim in giving the teaching what we want to do, the concept-based teaching will reach or inculcate the brains of the students only by involving us in each of these teaching modalities. What exactly is blended learning? We have our normal chalk and talk method or we use the smart boards. Nowadays, our white boards have become or black boards have become as smart boards. But instead of using these smart boards as just as white boards or black boards, what is important is you have to explore the smart board. You can use various tools in the smart board to show your video presentation connected to that class. For example, if a temporomandibular joint disorder has been taught, the anatomy of the temporomandibular joint, the physiology, the biofunction, and the video presentations of arterial anterior disc with displacement or without this displacement with reduction, without reduction, all these, if you are able to show certain video presentations along with your extempo lecture or your PowerPoint presentation lecture, if you're going to blend your learning along with online learning modalities like video presentations or displaying the video lecture or a flip class lecture of the same concept being taught in other foreign universities or other universities, in both national and international level, you are able to give a, a complete, a comprehensive knowledge of that particular concept, both based on your expert opinion, based on your usual conventional method of teaching and blending it with online learning makes the learning process most effective. And it also makes the learning process most interesting and the students will be connected to you starting from the class beginning till the end. And they also will get a visual presentation, 
which will be a more clear based learning because ideally as a teacher what we expect is whatever we have taught definitely have to reach the students and at the same time during their examination whether it's a practical examination or a university theory examination they should be able to recollect what has been taught in the class and reproduce it for them to fetch more marks so these type of presentations during class including apart from your powerpoint usual powerpoint presentation instead of making it as a monotonous powerpoint presentation blending your learning along with the various online tools showing the video presentations will definitely help the students to understand the concept in a better manner this is another methodology to make your extempo class even more understandable simple concept based this is one of the concept mapping where you can give a blueprint a synopsis of your presentation or your lecture whatever chapter you want to take the main chapter the components in the main chapter and the explanation of the components in individually in each of the concepts related to that particular chapter so in one bird view the students are able to get clearly what exactly the teacher wants to convey in one shot in one presentation or in one slide the students are able to understand the entire portion of that particular chapter which you want to cover this also gives confidence to the students that the topic is seems to be very simple and the components under this topic or the sub chapters under this topic makes it very simple when you present it in one shot so the mind mapping is actually giving an overview it's also making the students to understand that there are very few concepts related to that particular concept which will make them to easily memorize looking at this mind mapping and a very simple fast way or an, a very a rapid approach of giving the concepts in one shot and it is very beneficial because you are able to plan out the class properly and what are the uh, innovative modalities which you want to incorporate you can there are different sources for mind mapping like x mind me mind simple mind where you can even incorporate videos you can even incorporate photographs of the patients which you want to display and it will be more a productive manner you can even share this mind map with your colleagues so that the class also be standardized and you can even uh, make this mind map as a one way of uh, conveying the summary of your entire class so this is an example where a class i had taken on the about the observational study so when you look at this concept map we are getting an idea that in an observational study how a title have to be framed how an abstract have to be framed introduction part what i have to cover in the introduction part for example you can see that in introduction i have another box which is telling you what i have to cover in the introduction like background and rationally have to be covered in introduction in methodology part what i have to cover results statistical analysis i have to cover in discussion i have to cover limitations and generalizability in other information i have to cover about the funding opportunities so in this particular slide in this particular concept map the entire information what i have to cover when i am writing an observational study is been clearly explained in the mind map and this mind map is also giving me an information there are two varieties of observational studies and what are the important information i have to cover in a cohort study what are the information i have to cover in a case control study so i am able to track what i have to cover and it is giving in a very simple manner and a very comprehensive manner at the same time a very simple representation and looking at this mind map i'm getting an idea that there are three types of observational studies which has been clearly explained in the mind map and what is the importance of each of these study is also been explained so this is just an example this can be applied to whatever concepts which you want to take a class where you can show the different sub chapters and what are the main unique points which you need to cover in that particular portions if you are covering a particular lesion say an ulcerative lesion you can give the classification of the ulcers and for each ulcer you can even put a photograph of the patients so this in one shot the students also feels that if if they are going to have a presentation of 100 slides 
it will be very tiresome and student also will have a feeling when with the 100 slide will come whereas in one slide if you are going to cover the entire class this makes the students to have a keen note to know what the, the teacher is going to tell next what are these important points let me only concentrate on these important points these are the salient points or the highlighting points or the important concepts which i would be able to cover it up in one particular slide so this is one way of teaching and this teaching methodology we are doing it in our university and we are finding that the students are having a very good response and they are able to understand and they are also able to reproduce this concept map when it has been asked during evaluation teaching becomes monotonous when you don't have activity in between you need some break in between and that break also need to be informative that is what is activity based learning activities in between your lectures making your lectures very short like 20 minutes or 10 minutes lecture or even a 15 to 30 minutes lecture not more than that but giving activity for more than 45 minutes will make the student to apply what you had taught in the lecture that activity can be like giving a case scenarios and asking them to solve those case scenarios some hands on session related to your lecture you can keep questioning them or you can divide them into small groups and make it a small group learning the activity which i used to give during lecture yeah. is by using the online tool called kahoot where you'll be able to frame quiz you'll be able to frame questions like true or false you'll be able to frame questions where they can even give open and that answers it is an online tool which you can download it's a free downloadable app where you will be utilizing it where you can frame the quiz time limit also for each and every question what you are asking as a quiz pattern whether they have to take 30 seconds 60 seconds or 90 seconds that it is an editable you can frame the time schedule and you can start using this app and keep adding questions one by one and finally a game pin will be generated which has to be shared to the participants the students whom for whom you are taking the class you can share the pin so the idea here is if you are conducting a quiz as a whole you will be conducting a quiz where you will be incorporating two or three students or four students in a group only one person will be active whereas in kahoot quiz method each and every one has to attend the quiz so it makes the individual participation so that is the uh, reason why i had chosen kahoot quiz as an act one of the activity in between my lecture schedule another activity which i used to give to make every participants to involve in the learning process is a google form which we give for collection of survey related answers usually we circulate google forms and we if you want to have some department related activity or institutional level if we want to collect some information from individual staff usually we had started using this google form i had utilized this google form to create activities during lecture sessions where individual questions will be asked the idea the idea of using this google form or the advantage is that individually you will be able to even collect the marks from the individual persons through their mail and we'll be able to download the responses we'll be able to download the evaluation done and you can easily present and there is even a graphical representation how many of them have scored about 10 or how many of them have scored about 5 6 7 based on whatever number of questions so it's giving you a visual presentation of the class evaluation also so two or three activities which uh, there are many activities so two or three activities which is very simple you need not be a technocrat the one which you are using it day and out for other activities you can try to blend those activities in your learning process so now with this introduction i would like to share my presentation to dr shanmuga sundaram who will be handling the rest of the teaching innovative modalities along with an hands on session to make you understand how exactly you can blend technology in your teaching modality Yeah, good evening, friends. Uh, hope uh, Dr. Mama Eshuri has uh, taught you some of the 
teaching techniques that is your blended learning, your mind mapping, and activity based learning. So to continue on that, what we are going, what we are doing today itself is a blended learning activity because she has given an intro about some of the techniques. And I'm going to give an online tool uh, additions to online teaching methods or online tools that we can use in our innovative teaching. So that, uh, so what we need both are doing today itself. So only we're making the presentation, single presentation in a dual mode so that it's a blended one. So she has given an intro of something and I'm going to give a activity based or an online uh, activity on that. So that itself was one type of the blended learning method. So, and another thing is in between my thing, I'm going to do uh, activities and uh, I'm also make the participant to be active on the session. So that one type is the participatory learning methodology and the activity based methodology, because when we'll be doing a slido.com activity, I'll be involving the participants to do the activity on online. So if uh, the participants are having uh, attending this session by mobiles, kindly, if you are able to grab another mobile from your home, it will be very useful because I'll be sharing a keyboard or a thing that you can uh, open in the mobile so that you can uh, actively participate. And uh, in one mobile, you can attend the session and other mobile, you can participate. Or if you're using the laptop, no, no nothing to worry. You can open another window and you can do the activity. If, if you're not able to participate in the activity, also it's no, no issues. Just you can visualize how it can be done. So I'm uh, Dr. Shanva Sundaram, the director of some School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, uh, well senior University Chennai. So with this uh, introductory note, I am uh, going to continue from where did uh, Dr. Uma Mageshwari stop. I need to, in, in uh, mind mapping itself, I'll be uh, letting you know some of the other things what uh, she was talking about. Yeah. Mind maps can be uh, made using certain uh, softwares and it is a freely available softwares or uh, apps are available like uh, Simple Mind, um, Mapping Mind like this. There are a lot of softwares which you can use to make the mind maps. And uh, I'll be able to show you a class which is prepared by a professor who has uh, one full chapter you have summarized in a particular slide. So let me show you a topic on, because I'm a pharmaceutical person, I'll be giving examples from pharmacy. So it's nothing wrong in it, whether you belong to which profession of teaching, you can apply in any type of teaching, wherever it is. So this mind map, it just summarizes the old topic on history of pharmaceutical legislation in India. That is, you can see, that is the center is the topic, that is history of pharmaceutical education in India. And how it was, post-independence era and how it was in pre-independence era. Like this, this is a single chapter. If you take this chapter and if you want to make different slides, it will take nearly 50 to 40 slides to do a class. But if you do a mind map on this and you can make this a single slide, and it is also easy for the student to revise while he's preparing for his exams and other things, you'll be definitely knowing what the whole chapter you need to cover. So if you see this uh, particular slide, this, this is a full chapter of nearly 40 to 50 pages. And uh, if you prepare as a single class with a lot of PPTs, it will take nearly 50 to 60 slides to explain each and everything. But in this one slide, you can summarize the whole thing so that it will give you a correct picture of what you have to prepare. And, uh, and this mind mappings are very easy. It can be prepared not only by the faculty, even the students, and you can also use this mind mapping technology to give us as an uh, assignment to the students, because uh, nowadays the students, if you give a normal assignment, the students are not uh, interested to do. At the same time, if you will be giving an assignment based on uh, key assignments or assignment, creative type of assignments, if you want to make the students really involve and prepare an assignment instead of make for cut, copy, paste, definitely these uh, mind map activities will be very, very useful for the students. I'll show you a mind map which is prepared by the students themselves. So they are very creative because the younger generation minds are very, very creative and they prepare a lot of things. So this is a mind map prepared by a student on, because I have given an assignment on pro drugs to prepare mind maps. 
So I'll be showing two or three mind maps which is prepared by the students, how creative they are. This is an old chapter on pro drugs. So they are given the classification and from each classification, they are given the types, the benefits, the advantages, the objectives, the novelties and so on. So this is prepared by one of the student, uh, Kritika. And similarly, on the same topic, if you see, there are so many mind map preparations on the topic of pro drugs. This is another student has prepared a mind map on involving even the structural examples of the chemical structures and so on. So like this, the same topics, if you give an assignment, the student will not copy, cut, copy, paste because they'll really put in the creative mind. So only this called as mind mapping. You have to apply your mind and you have to creatively prepare all this and it will summarize the whole chapter in very simplified format so that and uh, always nowadays the children are very uh, attracted to the visual images and visual type of learning because now from the childhood itself they are using the mobiles and seeing all these uh, videos and infographics and other things by which they learn rather than in the olden times we used to by hard paragraphs and paragraphs and pages by pages but now that is not the concept now the new concepts are just to have a visual images and from the visual images the students will grab all those things into their minds so these types of mind maps will simply attract the children and they'll be easy to study all those things. So these are the, some of the mind maps which I wanted to show during my, from, from where the, Dr. Uma Mageshi was presenting. And uh, with that, now we'll be moving on, continuing with the presentation on other innovative techniques. That is, uh, next technique is going to be the peer-to-peer -peer learning. So many will be uh, uh, wondering what is this peer? Peer is nothing but the students. That is, in short, if you want to say, the peer teaching is a teaching methodology where the students teach the other students. So it can be the same class students teaching the other class students, or it can be the senior students. Maybe a third year student can teach a first year student, or a final year student can teach a first year or second year student, or the alumni of the college. Because the alumni, uh, when they are students, uh, they learn something, and but what the advantage the alumni have, they have a practical experience now. They go for a job. Then the same concepts, what they read theoretically, they apply practically in the job. And if you call those type of alumni, what happens is that they'll come and teach the juniors both the theoretical as well as the practical experience. And the, what, uh, what is the advantage of this method is the students are more compatible to learn from the age group of the same age group of people, maybe one year or two years of elder people. So they'll be thinking that be uh, very colloquial uh, conversations and listening and moralities are happening between them. So they blend each other very well compared to a teacher to a student uh, relationship. The, it, this is like a friendly relationship between the senior junior relationship where they involve. So this is called as peer to peer learning where the senior students or the same class of students, they teach this perspective and uh, not only the same students, because we have a cluster or group of students, one group of students will same, teach the same concept in a different manner. So what happens that they learn the same concept in, from different individuals perspective. So why is this peer to peer learning is very important is that because in NAC also this appreciates the peer to peer learning methodology in teaching learning process, because uh, it's a teamwork. And it's also having a learning to give a feedback and it's gaining new perspective. Each type of perspective is gained. And now the next concept, what we are going to talk is going to be the inquiry-based learning. Show the inquiry, it's nothing but asking or interacting or asking few questions. There are four steps or four phases in this. That is one is the interactive phase and the second one is the clarification phase. Next one is going to be the questioning phase and finally it's going to be a designing phase. So definitely this is a guide for the teachers how, how to engage the student by asking some uh, question and clarifying or summarizing the thing and questioning and designing the concept. In this technique, there are five E's are involved. The E number one is engage, then explore, then explain, elaborate and evaluate. That is engaging the students with the challenging situation. We are giving a situation to the students, prior knowledge is activated and the questions are provoked, okay? 
So they start what if you engage a student with the proper question or a situation or a role play event, what happens? The students start exploring or the students start investigating the things with the prior knowledge or the challenges that has been given to them. With that, they with the challenges that have been given to them, they create the ideas to how to solve the things. Then what happens is they start explaining the phenomenon of the new knowledge gained by them and how it can be applied. And they also elaborate. The next E is going to be the elaborate. The students apply the knowledge towards new situations. Knowledge is deepened and extended. And finally, you have anything has to be evaluated. So that the knowledge which has been gained by the student, it can be evaluated by type one, some or other method of assessing the students. So the five E's in inquiry-based learning is nothing but the engaging the students, ex making the students to ex other engaging the students with new novel ideas or novel situations. You're giving the situ situation to a student and making the student to explore the situation and coming out with creative ideas to explain the how they can solve the things and how they can elaborately what other knowledge they have gained. And finally, you evaluate the students. The same thing you can put forward in another thing, that is you ask a question, make the student investigate on the question, then they ask you giving a creative ideas on this and they all discuss and finally they put it in paper how it can be reflected. This is called as your inquiry-based learning. Next is going to be the flipped classroom. Now everyone uh, may be aware of what flipped classes, flipped classes, but exactly what does it mean? Uh, because uh, nowadays a new concept of era, what happens is we share the notes with the students but through our WhatsApp or through any um, uh, uh, platforms, even by Google Classrooms and other things. So the, the traditional method of classes, the student, uh, the teacher will be telling to the student that tomorrow I'm going to do ex such and such topic if the interested student can uh, go through the topics and come. The same thing is what we are doing in the flipped classroom. That is, the student knows tomorrow I'm going to take one particular class. The day before the class, what the teacher does is either the teacher shares the presentation what she's going to take tomorrow, or she's going to uh, share the relevant uh, study materials related to the topic what she's going to take tomorrow, she or he, and uh, they'll be also sharing the videos or audios related to the particular content and the materials to the students. So what happens, the student is given the old picture of what teacher is going to take the, on the next class. So before the class itself, the student knows what the content is going to come across. So the interested students will go through all each and everything. They'll come out with uh, the questions, what has to be asked in the class after the teacher has finished her class. So the next day, what happens when the teacher goes on with the class, the student will be able to follow the class easily that because they have gone through the e-content or they gone through the study materials either in the form of videos or audios or in the form of presentations. So it will be easy to follow with the class. And they also at the end of the class, definitely the student will be able to ask few questions related to what, what are the thing they missed in the which they are not able to understand because if in the extreme, uh, without uh, doing this, if you do a normal class, the students will be, and we'll be asking, telling the students, if you have any doubts, please clarify. But the students will be hesitating because they are not uh, exactly aware of the entire class. But in the flipped classroom, already the student is aware of the content of the class, and already they have gone through it. And if they are able to correlate with the class, so that is what they'll be definitely coming forward and participate in the discussion sessions. That is, the first thing is student, they prepare before the class, they prepare during the class and after the class. So this is the flipped class. That is before you, the teacher gives the same content what she is going to take. And the, during the class, the practice or exercises can be given. And after the class also, the student check whether the, the goals are fulfilled. So this is the flipped classroom and which you can also use uh, E flip books and other things also can be study materials can be shared to the students. The next thing what we are going to see is going to be a participative learning because even the kindergarten children are nowadays involved in the classes by using some uh, creative ideas and what the mama Gishu was talking also on the activity base. We should give some activities or make the student participate in the class because we address the students for nearly 50 to 60 students in the class and in 
to grab the attention of each and every student is very difficult in nowadays generation. If you want to grab the attention really for all the 50 to 60 students, definitely you have to give some activities or make them participate in the class so that they get back to the class and follow up with the teacher. So what happens is, if we keep on giving an extempore class or just keep on giving a uh, lecture based on the PowerPoints and other things, the students uh, get bored and they don't uh, follow us. So what happens is in between the classes, you give some icebreaker activities. The activities can be related to, uh, it's nothing but breaking the ice because it's, the student will be after 30 minutes of class, he'll be in a very stiff situation. His mind will be uh, saturated. Suddenly, if, if you give some uh, small, small uh, ins and activities, which will break the ice from his mind and it will so only it's called as icebreaker activities. The activities can be very small activities. And if you go through what are the various icebreaker activities, everyone they can innovatively employ in the class so that they can get back the attention of the students. Icebreakers are given, means this can be done before the class, sorry, before starting the class or during the middle of the class or at the end of the class. Why? Because if you're, if you're going for a second or third period of the day, what happens already the student mind is engaged for the first two periods for 45, 45 minutes of class and if you're going for the third hour, the student mind will be totally engaged. So to break the ice from the mind, just you give some small activities, then you start your class, the student will feel very refreshed. Similarly, during the class also you can do this activity and finishing the class also, you can sometimes you can do this so that what happens, it makes the things easier for the next hour teacher or the faculty to make the student engage a class in, in a proper manner. So now we are going to see something called as the Slido. That is a, one of the app where we can, uh, as already the Uma Mageshi was talking about one app called as Kahoot, where she was using the quiz and other uh, templates. The similar kind of things can be done in Slido. For this only I told uh, to you to have some dual mobile or uh, other dual window in the system. So let me explain what is a Slido and what, what all you can do with Slido. So let me start with just, so it's nothing but a website, just in Google you type slido.com. So it will take you to this particular page where what you can do is you can uh, just uh, sign up with your Google account or you can create a whole account. Just I'm going to see, uh, show you I, how I can do it with the Google account. I'm going ahead with my normal uh, account, which I use in my system. So now it is logged on. Okay. So this is how anybody can immediately log into your Slido system, slido.com website. Just Google it, slido.com. And either if you have a permanent account already created, you can use that or if you don't have a permanent account, you can log in uh, as a guest manner in using your Google account or some other account which is given by that thing. So, so uh, in this, what we can do, I'll show you. If you go to the tutorials, so just I'll show play a tutorial so that uh, with Slido seamlessly integrated in WebEx, you now have powerful live polling and Q&A capabilities at your fingertips, right there in your meeting. In this video, we'd love to walk you through how to set it up and use it. Let's dive in. Before you get started, make sure that Slido is approved and enabled in WebEx by your system administrator. Update your WebEx to the latest version and please ask your meeting attendees to do the same. Once that is taken care of, schedule a meeting, launch it, and click the apps icon here at the bottom. Pick Slido from the sidebar and open it. Here's where you can set everything up as the host of the meeting. There are many poll types to choose from, so let's just create a quick word cloud poll to kick off the meeting. Your poll is saved instantly, so you can either launch it right away or go back to create more. To ask multiple questions at once, for example, to collect feedback at the end, pick Survey from the list of polls. Now that our polls are ready, let's move over to the Q&A tab. Q&A is disabled by default, but this so Like this, you get a lot of tutorials. This is actually how to use Slido in various online meetings, as well as WebS meetings, if you use Microsoft Teams, 
to use a PowerPoint, how to use the slide. Welcome to Slido for PowerPoint. This is the easiest way to make your PowerPoint presentations more engaging. With our PowerPoint integration, you can add live polls, quizzes, and Q&A directly to your slides and present without switching applications. To get started, download the integration from slido.com forward slash PowerPoint and install it on your computer. Then just open your PowerPoint and you'll be able to see the Slido button in the menu. Once you click on it, the Slido sidebar will automatically open on the right hand side. Log in with your account or just sign up if you are new to Slido. Then create a session and you can start adding new polls, quizzes or Q&A to your slides. You can select from different types of polls. Let's go with a word cloud poll for now to break the ice and engage people right from the start. Just type your question, hit save, and your poll will be automatically added to your slides. Let's add one more. This time we will use a multiple choice poll to run a quick pulse check and collect everyone's feedback. At the end of your presentation, you might want to run a Q&A with your participants. To do this, simply click Add Q&A and it will be added automatically to your presentation. Once you've finished your slides and added all the polls, just start presenting by clicking Present. Instead of switching between applications, the poll will automatically show and you'll be able to see the results in real time on your screen. To get people to participate, you can just tell them to scan the QR code or ask them to go to slido.com on their mobile device or desktop and enter the code. Also, participants can send their questions throughout your presentation. Once you come to the Q&A slide, you will see a list of submitted questions that you can easily manage. Quick note, Slido for PowerPoint currently only works on Windows. If you are a Mac user, you can still use Slido without the integration. Just use our Switcher app for switching between Slido and PowerPoint. And that's it. To get started, just go to slido.com forward slash PowerPoint. Thank you for watching. Welcome to Slido for Google Slides. Hope you understood how to use the Slido in a PowerPoint. Let me also show an answer on that. And uh, if you don't know anything, there are a lot of tutorials on each and everything, how to create a poll, how to add images to the poll, how to activate a survey, how to create a survey, what are different types of polls you can use, what are the advanced tips for polls, how to create a quiz, how to run a quiz with your audience, how to uh, advance tips for the quizzes and how to moderate incoming questions, how to manage live question answer sessions, label the audience, advanced tips for the things and how to make an event, how to set up an event, how to reintroduce Slido. Now there's so many activities that are, you can do some brainstorming sessions all this live, you can prepare, or you can do it in a live mode, or you can also do it in an event already created manner. So that what happens is that you can engage actively the student along with you. So today we will try something on that. Let me uh, create a new Slido for you all people. So it's going to be on today's date. I'm going to make it active till tomorrow's date. And uh, as is your activity, let us keep today the name of the activity. So, and you could see that anyone with the code or the link can participate. Now you create a Slido. So I'm doing this in actually in admin mode. And if you could see so many activities now I can create. So I'm going to do, make you all create an activity called as word cloud. So the word cloud is going to be, what are the other innovative methods? Now the participants, you are the participants and you are going to answer me from your mind, what are the other innovative methods of teaching you know, you can just type to me. So by doing this activity, what are the innovative methods of, now we can also add that apart from what I have told, uh, Uma Mageshi told, what are other innovative methods of teaching. Now you see to that uh, allow multiple answers and enable all this and full description. So all those things. 
So you, this is what if you want to add some click image or something, I can drag and drop an image to this. Now I save. Okay. So another thing is, and these are the templates which I can uh, use for preparing your uh, things. So let us see a little bit later on all this. Now let me present it to you. So all of you can use your mobile. You can open a slido.com on your browser in the mobile or in the laptop. And you can use this code that is ash3707458. And you can uh, participate with me. Now the poll is activated. And you can see whoever is uh, So you can directly screen or you can directly join through your slido.com mobile so that slido.com you can type this and you can directly do this. So participants are you with me? Let us try. Anybody? Yes, sir. Yeah, participants kindly try. You just go to slido.com and type in that uh, as 37007458 and you try to participate and answer me what are the different uh, innovative methods of teaching. Mind map, great. One of the participants has started doing it. Mind maps, right. Peer group learning, superb. Great. Problem-based learning, experiential learning, flip the classroom, chalk and talk. So nearly we have uh, 53 participants out at, in that uh, myself and mom, I guess you are two. Uh, so remaining 51 participants, you can type. You can get 51 type of answers. Come on, try, keep trying. Yes, now the, see the word cloud is getting bigger and bigger. This is how you engage the participants, uh, either in your online method or you can doing it in your regular class. In the regular class also, because nowadays before pandemic, uh, every college has restricted the students not to use, strictly not to use the mobiles. And during pandemic, it's uh, no other go, everyone was engaged in online teaching and we strictly instructed the student to bring the mobiles to the class and use everything using the mobile gadgets. Nowadays, it has become a practice. Every students are bringing the mobiles inside the class. So during the class also, you can just put it on a PPT, some of the quiz or some of the polls and a word clouds or something and ask the student to immediately answer what they have done. And you can also have a quick survey from the students. So, Zigzag learning, yes, which I'm going to talk a little later. So that will be uh, during the end of the talk, Zigzag learning will be there. Inquiry-based learning, good. Okay, the participants are now becoming active and participants are uh, getting to know what is really happening. So in between also you can add a poll. The, the poll can be uh, anything. It can be a multiple choice option. It can be given something like this. You can do some polling or options also. So let the see, and you can also see it in the smaller screen. That is a participatory learning and other things. So this is one type of activity just I have shown you. There are plenty of activities as I discussed with you that can be done using Slido. So you can first learn what is Slido and how it can be done. As I told you, you can give hands-on training 
team building, leadership, project meetings, status brainstorming sessions, getting, you can get the feedback from the students for your classes, you can create your uh, quizzes, you can create a lot of events, and you can also get all this polling and other things. So this is how you activate, the, because now for, for the 45 minutes, myself and Uma Mageshwar was talking to you on these topics, we are not, and we don't, we are not uh, facing each other, the part, we nearly are 50, 60 participants, but we are not able to see the faces of the participants. We are not really knowing whether the participants are with us or not with us. Now, by doing this type of activities, now we are able to know that the participants are with us and many participants are trying to be with us, but maybe suddenly I told you the technology, which may be getting uh, time for them to getting adopted using two mobiles or within the same mobile to use all this because the technologies, uh, many are not very uh, familiar with the technologies. So nothing wrong, you can learn. And this is a, one of the activity which will be very useful for a participatory learning, either in your offline class, or also in your online classes, especially if you want to conduct a quiz program, because in quiz, what happens is we make them into groups and ask them some questions. Always a student question, uh, student from the group, if you have a three students in a group and only one student will be keep on answering and the two students keep on uh, being silent. But finally we declare them, uh, uh, the group will be a winner. But if you want to do an online quiz by these methods, what happens either by Kahoot or this or by another apps, what happens is that we can make the individual student to participate and individual student will be getting the marks. If you post 10 questions, they'll be getting individual students how uh, many marks and you can also see to that which question was answered uh, very well and which question was not answered very well all these analysis practical analysis analytics that is uh, that can be done so what happens a student student teacher can analyze where the uh, where they are going wrong and there will be an overview of analytics see how many participants engaged 90% and nine out of 10 uh, participants were engaged. What is the data? What is the poll? All this analysis they can make. And everything we can also, what we can make is that for each question, if you are given 10 questions, which question was answered uh, correctly? Most of the number by the participant, which question was answered wrong? So if the student, can, uh, the teacher, can, based on that, they can focus on that particular relevant area where the students are weak, they are not able to understand, and they can concentrate on that particular area. So all these can be done using your slideout.com and other thing. In slideout.com, you have a lot of other options also. So this is one of the apps which I wanted to show you all people. Let us move on to the continue with the PowerPoint presentation where we left off. So that's, that is where the slider was happening. And the next one, what I'm going to show you is another app that is the Kaizala. This is nothing very similar to the WhatsApp, but this is app was created by the Microsoft Teams. That is a Microsoft uh, company, which uh, you use for the Microsoft words and other things. So what does this Kaisala do? If you see the screen, you'll be very quite uh, able to correlate with me. That is, this screen is very, very familiar to all people, just like a WhatsApp screen. But what is the advantage? The advantage is that if you see this attachment area, where you can make some announcements to a particular group of students or group of faculty or group of teams. And you can make a lot of announcements, you can add some photos and other things. That is one type of thing where you can do. And you can also post a job. That is this job has to be completed by so-and-so people. And we can see the results who has completed a job or not completed a job. All those things can be a thing and you can fix a meeting. Uh, you can schedule a meeting with them and you can also post that this meeting is going to be held and where it is going to be held, what for it is going to be held at the end of the meeting. All this can be done with this uh, Kaisala. And similarly, here also you can conduct quick polls during the class and you can also conduct uh, surveys. And uh, there are a lot of other options. If you go for this is a desktop version, I'm showing Kaisala. If you go for the Kaisala, which is available in Play Stores, for both iOS and Android devices. There will be a lot of other options like posting the attendance to the students, posting um, question uh, surveys and other things. And a lot of other options can be used. This app is very similar to WhatsApp, but it has more add-on features compared to WhatsApp because WhatsApp, we share only the images, photos. That is the bottom, what we are having here, audios, videos, photos. And sir, excuse me, sir. The yes, slide is still at uh, joinatslido.com. What, ma'am? 
the slide, the screen, the present screen uh, topic which you are saying, screen is not visible. Okay, ma'am, just a second. I'll stop the slide and get back to. Okay. Now you are able to see. Ah uh, yes, yes. Uh, now yeah. it's still it's showing. Uh, yeah. Now the Kaisala screen is. Screen? Yes. Yes. SPF class in charge is that. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. I'll uh, get back to this Kaisala once again because. Uh, So Kaisal is an app which is very, very quite similar to WhatsApp and uh, it was created by this Microsoft team and uh, so now you can see the screen uh, because it's very similar to WhatsApp but what are the advantages in this is you can see the attachment button where you can make this announcements where you can make a job job can be assigned to a particular person or in a group or a job can be assigned to a group of people and meetings can be fixed the pollings during the class and surveys during the class all these can be uh, done apart from this is a web version of kaisala if we go to the mobile version of kaisala we have further more options and uh, if you see what is the difference that is in whatsapp the bottom version will be available that is you can share photos videos messages documents words and audio files whereas in Kaisala, you can add this announcement, job, all these type of other add-on features. You can uh, download it from the iOS and uh, App Store and uh, Android App Store. And uh, you can see these activities and you can also make some atten attendance activities, also regular class attendances and uh, opinion polls. All these can be done. This can be done using your Kaisala app. So next thing we'll be moving on to is Next feature, what you are going to see is infographics. Hope my sliders are moving and visible to you all people. Can anyone respond? Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Yes. So infographics, as the name uh, predicts, it's nothing but the two terms. One is the info and uh, graphics. So info is nothing but the information which is represented in the form of graphics that is going to be infographics. I'll let me show you some of the uh, infographics which is uh, so infographics all these can be used for regular teaching or innovative teaching methods or it can also be uh, used for your assignments that is the assignment of your students for as I told you if you want not the student not to copy or not to imitate your assignment from others. You can give the, these type of assignments. So infographics. So this is how your infographic template is can be private created and this infographics can be presented uh, some of the, e it is also one of the techniques where we pre prepare this e-posters during your presentations and other things. So infographics can be prepared in a single slide and you have got a lot of uh, templates where you can uh, present your data. So this is how the infographics are presented. This is also a technique which is uh, in correlation with mind maps. So where you, I mean, mind maps will have uh, roots and branches, whereas this will have a complete data or a complete package about a particular topic or a particular uh, activity. So the infographics uh, represents the whole information in graphical methodology. Instead of uh, pages and pages of sentences and sentences, this will give you a short output of this. So that is how the infographics works. And this is one of the technology that you can be used for your students to make them more active. In the thing, someone has also told that uh, one method of teaching that is your zigzag activity is nothing but you group the students into small, small groups, and uh, you can divide the students into two categories. So that is uh, one who has better knowledge that can be kept as an expert group. Other students who has got a comparatively less knowledge that can be divided into a study group. So the expert group and the study group will be uh, given some uh, 
challenges or role plays and other events inside the classroom what they use they share the thing either by the uh, oral conversations or by other mode of methodologies this is a zigzag activity it can be designed inside the classroom that is up to the subject in charge or the faculty and based on the topic or the subject they are going to class this is also one type of activity based class that can be used this is also innovative method of teaching so we can grab attention to the students you can see the four or five students from each group will be placed in a smaller smaller group and we have an expert group and a study group so that they answer and interact with them and do such type of activities so before going to finishing my presentation i want to because all, most of you are faculty members, I want you to share something related to what uh, in the infographics and all, how easily you can prepare this infographics, what are the tools that we can use for doing all this. So just uh, I will be finishing my presentation in another five minutes or so, so just be uh, patient listening. And uh, so how this infographics, because if you go for a normal version of infographics, what happens is you, you'll have a limited things and you, all these infographics can be prepared using either PowerPoint or by using Google Slides or by using, if you are using a Mac user, you can use keynote presentations. So these infographics, you get a lot of ready-made templates. While preparing a slide and a slide, if you want to make the slide to be innovative and attractive, you want to make a circle PowerPoint. So what happens, these are the templates which is ready-madely available where you can use these ready-made templates if you want to make a circle for circle infographics. Similarly, if you want to use So if you want to use some other uh, comparative infographics, if you want to compare something, all these ready-made templates are available. So actually what uh, I have done is because I am very much uh, um, attracted in taking pictorial type of classes to my students, make them to be following my classes. So I, this type of infographics, uh, which I am showing all these templates, it is coming under a package called as Infographia. So Infographia I have purchased is for $49. So it gives me nearly 5,000 to 6,000 uh, ready-made templates in different categories. So it is easy for me as a teacher. I need not think how to design and how to waste my, I need not waste my time in designing a slide. Just if I have a template, I'll be putting into all these things in my template. So that, so, th and there are a lot of other things available for $29 uh, to $49. It will come to Indian money, nearly 3,000, 5,000 rupees. If you invest once in lifetime, you can be using this and there'll be, not only with the 5,000 templates, every uh, month they'll be adding 100 templates or the 200 templates to the current thing so that the teachers can be more benefited in preparing a creative and innovative type of slides in a very matter of seconds. And hopefully many of the faculty members and the students will be using a normal PowerPoint version because uh, they'll be using a Microsoft 2020. If you're using a current version, everyone is using Microsoft 2021 student version or they'll be using um, Microsoft Office uh, 2017, uh, 2019 or 2020. If you're using latest uh, things or some, if you're using olden days, so you'll be using 2010 or 2012 type of, because you, people think it's very costly and very, uh, you know, you, people, you may not, everyone is uh, used to using a cracked version of your Microsoft Office and other things. I'll show you a simple way. If you want to use a latest uh, Microsoft uh, Office, what you can just do is, you create a Microsoft Outlook account. Just go to Microsoft Outlook. Just you create a Microsoft uh,
outlook is just like because nowadays we are very very used to this addicted to the gmail if you use this microsoft outlook you can use uh, microsoft office on free so i uh, i already own a microsoft outlook account so that what happens is just like an email uh, i can use it for my email also but you can see on the left side sidebar where you can use microsoft word microsoft uh, powerpoint Microsoft Excel, Microsoft uh, Cloud and OneNote, everything I can use on the go. All this, the latest Microsoft 365. This is the Microsoft 365 app, which you can directly use. If, if you go for a purchase of this app, uh, you need to pay rupees 4,500 on annual membership. But without, if you don't want to use any money, just you can have a Microsoft Outlook account so that you can use um, PowerPoint, Excel, everything, the latest version, latest slides and latest templates, everything you can utilize and you get a beautiful themes and other things. So where you can use. So if you, as uh, showing in, uh, this is your personal plan and a family plan. If you use, want to buy and use, we don't want to buy, you can just go to the Microsoft Outlook and you can get all this done, okay? So you can create your uh, things and you can do your presentations. So this is how you can easily use your Microsoft Office. And uh, one more advantage I'll just show you. If you own a, you may be asking what is, so okay, if everyone is getting it free, uh, using a Microsoft Outlook account, what is the specialty in using a, a Microsoft account, which is having a, a paid version, okay. Now I'm creating a new slide for you all people. Hope you are able to sleep. Just if I want to put some image, um, I just uh, go to my Google once again. Just I'm copying paste and uh, now I pasted on image. If I want to paste some, some more images. See, now I just pasted two images, but what happens is that if I need to do it in a normal um, uh, 2021 version or Microsoft 2019 or 17 or 20, I need to drag on this image. I need to do all those things. But if you see in my site, that is a designer. This is an artificial intelligence available in your Microsoft 365. What happens is it designs you the slide in a so easy manner, how you want to show the slide. If I paste, just I pasted two images and it is giving me the option how these things can be predicted. So this is the advantage of using an original version of Microsoft 365. You use a paid version for 4,000 annual membership. So what happens is that whatever images or whatever text you paste, it will give you these images. So the slides which have myself and Omar Mageshi has prepared today, we use this uh, thing so that it is simple as for us to make the slide preparations easy so that any, we need not spend much time in preparing the slide and the slide also will looks beautiful. So that, that is a difference. We use a Microsoft Outlook account. You'll be using, except this feature, you'll be using all other uh, creative features. But if you use the original version to install, then you'll be using all this. So that don't uh, think for money, just as we teachers, uh, we can uh, at least not only, we need not purchase all the tools, we can purchase one or two tools, which is uh, will be useful and saving our time and creating more informative, creative, beautiful slides and creative classes for the students. So with this note, I we are ready to take on some questions and answers. Hope you all are enjoying the session for the day. Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Omar Mayesh is also with me so that uh, we can take up some questions. Thank you, sir and ma'am. 
the session is now open for discussion if any if you have any queries or doubts participants please unmute or you can put your queries in the chat box please do feel free to talk because we have witnessed such an outstanding session if anybody has any queries please do ask Nobody has questions. Okay. Can, can I say something? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. No, 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 no. To Dr. Shanmugam and uh, Dr. Uma. Yes, ma'am. You're talking about that mind map, no? Yes, ma'am. So, what what I, I understood, because my uh, guide, he was very much interested in making the mind map. So, what he told us... Uh, it, it's like connecting the right hand, right side and left side of your brain so that you can uh, retain it better. So for that, colors are very important. So when you make that branches, each one can be made in different colors. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so yes. that... Uh, it depends yeah. on the, so it, on this the is from my personal it. experience, I'm telling. Because yes. when I prepared one uh, presentation, uh, one slide was very colorful. And uh, when I presented it, that slide was missing. Only because of the color, I could remember that one slide is missing. Otherwise, when you prepare so much, you may uh, lose the continuity. But because of the color, I remembered that. And, and that was during my PG time. So I got so scared, uh, one slide is missing and I couldn't uh, present it. So. It is retained. The color is very important. So when you prepare that mind map, the coloring scheme is very important. Uh, that's what I understood. Yes, yes ma'am. Definitely we can have uh, uh, each branches of the mind uh, thing, what you are creating can uh, do different colors. And it also depends on the app, what you are going to select and download and use. Because some apps are with, with the very limitations and some app gives free hand to do the different type of mind maps as per our interest. Yes, thank you, sir. It was a very nice presentation. So many apps, so many innovative things. Very nice. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, so we are coming to an end of the session. That was indeed a great session by Dr. Uma Maheshwari, ma'am, and Shanmur Sundaran, sir. The two well versed pioneer teacher effectively delivered the session. I'm quite sure this will be so useful to our dear teachers. We had in between us, Dr. Anita Balan joined DME. She had joined us during the session. Thank you, dear Anita, ma'am, for joining ASMIC and ASCCA. Now I invite Dr. Bina Verma, ma'am, Professor and Head of Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology, Amida School of Dentistry, and the current president of ASMIC to deliver the word of thanks. Uh, before I start, I'm not uh, head of the department. I retired last year. Now I'm Professor Emerita. Sorry. <laughs> so good evening, one and all. I uh, extremely uh, happy that uh, this session was taken. So education is undergoing a paradigm shift from the uh, teachers sitting on the pedestal and uh, giving uh, knowledge to the students. And it is not decided by the student what uh, they should have. It is decided by the teacher what should be delivered. So there is a, a drastic change for that. That uh, student-centered learning is uh, the current uh, uh, concept. So for that, all these kind of apps and, and technology has to be incorporated into the uh, teaching so that uh, it will be more interesting as we grow. As the technology changes, we also should uh, change. It's very difficult for uh, people like me who are not well versed with the technology, but still I'm trying. So uh, it was very nice of you to, uh, uh, in, in this short while, you, you were able to explain it so nicely. And I hope that everybody 
enjoyed it and everybody in future is going to try that so the duty vested on me is a uh, word of thanks so uh, first of all i would like to uh, with the as a, as a as my president and on my personal behalf and you know, on behalf of all the people of asmic and uh, asesia team i would like to thank dr uma maheshwari and dr shanmuga sundaram for that excellent presentation which was very much inspiring and i hope uh, uh, everybody will take the cue from there and start doing it thank you very much both of you I would I would also like to thank Dr. Radha Krishnan, the principal of uh, Assisiya Dental College, uh, Dr. Nanda Kumar, the dean of uh, Assisiya Dental College, and our ever enthusiastic secretary, uh, Dr. De Deepa, and uh, uh, Dr. Anita Balan, and each and every one who has joined this session. It was very nice of you to join, and I hope everybody must have uh, gained so much knowledge. and they'll be utilizing it in their classes also thank you so much i don't want to extend my vote of thanks um, because it's already uh, 8:30 almost 8:30 and everybody will be so much starving so once again my heartfelt heartfelt uh, gratitude to each and every one of you thank you so much thank, thank you thank you ma'am thank you vina ma'am thank you sir thank you ma'am uh, the certificate of appreciation on behalf of asmic and assisia will be mailed to you both sir and ma'am thank you for that excellent session thank you all for joining asmic and assisia the session is now it's time to end the session thank you all thank you yeah good night ma'am good night good night thank you ma'am ma and thank you sir thank you thank you deepa ma'am thank you so much we hope to meet meet you in future also for such sessions sure 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 okay thank you so much